All right, everybody, welcome to another Amigo with an Ego podcast. And today, I guess I just want to talk about a few things. Um, a little bit about what's been going on for me, about everything that I've talked about in the past, my job. I want to talk a little bit about sports and, and just life in general. Um, so if you listen to my very first podcast, um, you know, I talked a lot about mental health and what I was going through at the time and just how I wasn't in a good place mentally at the time. My job was very stressful and it affected me in in a lot of ways. And I would say right now it still affects me, but not to the extent of what it used to. And it, it kind of sucks that I had to basically give up a role that I had that I had worked hard for, um, give up a position that I worked hard for. Um, I'm making less money. So I kind of struggle a little bit more with money right now and I got to be more cautious with my spending and, and, and things like that. Um, because like I said, we have bills to pay. We all got bills to pay. So um, it's been a little bit different for me and a huge adjustment, but, you know, just trying to work on that. Um, the good thing is I wouldn't say I'm as stressed um, as I used to be. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, but other than that, um, I really do want to focus my energy and give my all to YouTube and not because I'm expecting a huge payday or or I'm expecting to blow up, as you want to say, and, and make all this money. It's just something I enjoy doing. If I could make it my job, that would be amazing for me. You know, I'm not the type of person that can do, you know, a nine to five or can go to work every morning, every day or, or you know, have a certain schedule. Like I like to do things at my own pace when I want to, you know, if I could wake up every day and um do that to me that would be the best thing ever you know i i i really do hope that it can work out and you know i can do that in the future um it's something that i'm i really want to work for you know doing and right now it's a little bit tough because it's my own fault i don't i don't necessarily put in my all into that um um, but I want to start for sure. I want to start doing that and hopefully I can do that. Um, I'm going to try to work on that it's coming up this whole summer. Uh, hopefully I can do more unboxings, more vlogs. I really enjoy vlogging. I know I'm not the best at it, but, you know, I really want to do that more. Um, and the podcast, it seems like it just became a big craze and celebrities do it like everybody you know probably has a podcast and you know i get a lot i get and i feel like everybody wants to do youtube as well i get a lot of questions about youtube and i'm not the person to ask um but you know i do it for fun and i people think that i probably probably try to do it for money but i do it for fun because i like it you know i've always liked to have a camera um ever since i was little i like to take pictures and stuff like that and my dad was always recording something and always had a video camera as well. So I think I just kind of inherited that. Um, so, yeah. So first and foremost, I just say, like, if it's something you like to do and something you want to do, then go ahead and do it. Um, don't do it because you want to make money or expect to get money or anything like that. But I get a lot of questions um, regarding my my YouTube. Um, but, yeah, definitely if it's something you want to do and you think you're going to do it, Go ahead and do it. No one's going to stop you. Um, of course, you're going to have to invest, at, you know, later on if you plan to make it serious. And that's just one thing. And you got to figure out all the different things that you have to do, where you're going to upload, how you're going to upload, um, things like that, such as if you're doing a podcast and stuff like that. But, um, so, yeah, but this podcast, I'm not ready to keep uploading to Spotify and iTunes and and um, uh, SoundCloud because you have to pay uh, price and I'm not ready to do that because like I said I'm not that dedicated to my podcasting just yet but 
hopefully in the future I can get to that point. Um, but yeah, that's, that's been my personal life, um, so far with work and what got me doing this podcast. So I'm in a better place. Um, I try to stay busy, try to keep my mind off of work as much as possible. It's kind of hard at times, but I try. Um, so moving forward, I mean, right now what's big is, um, sports, the women's world cup is going on right now. USA just smashed the women's um usa team just smashed thailand i feel sorry for them they won 13 to 0 which is a new record alex morgan scored five goals um i will say i was a little bit confused as to why they celebrated every goal um like it I don't, like if they won the world cup or if they were playing like a, a sweden who's going to be the the last team that they that they face in the group play, who we know knocked them out of the Olympics in 2016. Um, so that's that was a little bit puzzling to me as to why they did that. But, um, I mean, I, I guess you should celebrate every goal. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But it just kind of confused me a little bit because I, I felt like we knew they were going to win. We knew they had beat them 9-0 to zero in in the past. So we knew it wasn't going to be that much of a challenge for them. So it was, it just kind of surprised me a little bit, but I'm all happy for them. I'm glad that they won. I think they'll still win the World Cup. They should. They're huge favorites, number one ranked team. Um, other than that, I haven't got to watch much other games. I did watch a little bit France in the opening game. They look good too. Uh, as we know, Sweden obviously is going to be a, a good test. I saw, I think Canada is pretty good as well. Um, and yeah, um, that's that. Um, what else? Oh, NBA Finals. Those That's happening right now. It's the Raptors and the Warriors. And it, the series is 3-2 with the Raptors looking to clinch that. Um, I think they will. Now that if you watched um, Game 5 and you saw KD go down with an Achilles uh, injury, which everybody knew was an Achilles problem. I, I don't know why the Warriors didn't like just sit him out for the season that that I, I don't understand I know a lot of people probably think well it's KD's decision it's his final word if he got to play or not but you have to understand this man is on the sidelines in your competitive spirit if you're if you want to compete um you rather be out there with your teammates rather you're hurt or not you know I I will do that just for rec soccer if I'm sick or I'm hurt, like, I want to be there for my team. I feel like I need to be there. And I've played multiple times, you know, sick, and where I sh- probably should have just stayed home. Um, but I still go to these games, or I'm feeling awful. You know, my body's just telling me not to do it, but I still will go and and play. So think about it. This guy is being paid millions to play a sport that he loves, um, that he's, you know, been playing since he was a kid, how important that is for him and to um and to just just be out there with his teammates and if they're asking him you know when he's going to come back or they need him that pressure you'll feel that I can imagine it's that much greater you know to a professional player um so I I I would have to blame the Warriors in this situation as to you know why he went out there and and got injured and the doctors if they cleared him that 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 kind of sucks And I feel they should have just, as soon as he got hurt in the Rocket series, they should have just sat him down and told him, you know what, you know, you're not going to play again. But I feel they think they might lose him in free agency, and he's never, he probably hasn't told them if he's going to stay or not. So they don't really care. You know, it's it's a bad thing to say, but I really feel like they don't care um, that much about him. And they just want to throw him out there. And, you know, all they're thinking about is winning the championship this year. And, they were down 3-1. He came back. Maybe he gave him that morale boost because sometimes just having a player out there is going to help you. And, you know, he started off pretty good, hit three threes, and then he went down, which is a shame, you know. But I guess maybe it was bound to happen no matter what. I guess if that's true, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know about that. But so I feel like maybe it's a better thing that he got it sooner than later, as bad as that sounds. Um, so maybe he can start recovering, uh, but 
it, it this whole situation has been tricky because, you know, all the sports analysts were saying that he should have just shut it down for the season like Kawhi did. Kawhi last season, if you know, if you follow the NBA, he, you know, kind of um, sat down with the Spurs and he said he wasn't going to play. And I feel like the organization didn't like that. They didn't really um, appreciate that very much. So um, they felt like he gave up on them. But he got outside opinion, which Katie did not. So um, he should have probably looked for an outside opinion, not for somebody that is working there with the with the organization that, of course, they just want him on the floor. But it kind of brings up an interesting point because um, if you remember Derrick Rose, he was criticized for not being on the floor when he was cleared to play. And he sat out a whole year or sat out for, you know, a long time, you know, saying that he wasn't ready to play. He was listening to his body and he got backlash for that. But then Kawhi is getting praise. And then they're telling, they're, you know, people are saying that KD should have followed the same route as Kawhi and just said he wasn't going to play. Maybe things are a little bit different. That was 2012, 2013. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Maybe times have changed. Things are different, but it kind of makes me think that Derrick Rose did the right thing, even though at the time I was not a fan of that and I wish he would have played, but maybe he did the right thing by that. So it's going to be interesting to see who wins the, the championship now, the finals. I still think it's going to be Toronto, especially with, KD out um but we'll see um and let's see okay I guess I'm gonna talk about one last topic before I go um so this past Saturday my cousin who we know we knew her as Weta even though that wasn't her name um it for those of you who don't know that's just a term of endearment um that us Latinos use us Mexicans use it just translates to white girl. Um, but that's what we, you know, called her. And, and I grew up knowing her by as Weta. So she passed away on Saturday. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to fly back to attend, you know, the service and, and stuff like that. And it was pretty hard, hard decision to make. Um, as you know, I live in Orlando. So... Um, I wish I could have been there for my family, um, for my mom and a lot of people, you know, I didn't tell a lot of people, but, you know, um, she, she was my cousin, but she was much older. I, I'm pretty young. I have a few cousins on my mo mother's side that are young, but for the most part, most of them are older. So it's, it's a little bit different, but I would say that I was close with her my mom found a whole bunch of baby pictures of me and a whole bunch of pictures of us, you know, that she had. And my mom has been sending them to me. And, you know, I got sad, a little bit sad, because it takes someone to be gone, I guess, as bad as that sounds, for us to realize certain things. And what I was remembering was... um the memories that I had of her that I didn't really, you know, you just don't process that and you don't think about that until, like I said, till someone's gone or you have a reason to. And, you know, I know she's, you know, um, in the sky, you know, looking down on us. And I just want to tell you what I thank you. If, if you can hear me, if some, somehow, some way you can hear me, you know, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I remember, a lot of memories that you gave me. I remember you you were the first um, one to take me to a movie. Um, you took me to watch Batman. Uh, I remember that. And that's when I fell in love with the character Batman. Um, you also took me to see my favorite, one of my favorite movies, um, the Ninja Turtles, which I was so excited to go, you know, watch that the next day that... I had told myself that I was going to go to sleep at like five o'clock to then wake up to somehow I thought I was going to, 
I was going to time travel and the day was going to come sooner. <laughs> and I also remember that you were one of the very few persons that wasn't my sister that my mom let babysit me. Um, I don't know how you pull that off, but I remember my mom left to Chicago and left me with you. Um, you also took me to my first high school football game. I don't remember much of the game because I fell asleep, but I do remember um, you taking me to Hardy's after for a meal and then dropping me off at home. And I also remember you taking me to watch the Selena movie, um, which, you know, by the way, I know that you really, really love Selena and you let that be known that you had all of her CDs and you loved her music. So I just want to say thank you for all those memories. And um, yeah, I know you're up there probably cheering on and dancing to Selena. Rest in peace, Weta. <laughs>